because <laughs> yes, because um, the very first scene, Alex is um, <laughs> attempting. To cook. Attempting. Her, to cook she has this idea that if she gives her daughter breakfast, she's doing good parenting, <laughs> and so she kind of just leaves the fixings for it and can't cook. And Jody at some point says, "I wish I had a mom like Lacey who cooked for me." Yeah. And there's that equation of good parenting with providing food. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. That's a great question. Okay, I have to tell you a story, though, but I'm glad I'm doing this, you know, so that everyone can see it. My husband, <laughs> you could give him, we, we split, my husband and I, the cooking duties, because a lot of the time I'm away from home or I'm, I'm not home in time for dinner or something. So and when I'm on book tour, all bets are off, so he cooks all the time. You could give him the most gourmet ingredients in the world. Everything turns into beefy mac. <laughs> Everything. And the kids, you know, I come home from no, book tour and they're like, guy, oh, you're like millions oh, of people. Wow, I'm going to call him after that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, he he admits weird. it. He's like, I don't know why everything I make turns into beefy. It's very funny. He just throws it all in the skillet and it all tastes the same. Um, but I, I love to cook. I actually wish, if I was not a writer, I'd love to be a pastry <laughs> chef. So, um, and mm -hmm. I cook a lot. Um, I'm not as good with dinners. I'm very bad at getting everything on the table at once. I always forget, oh, forget whatever's it. in the bottom oven or something. But, but I love desserts. And of course, then my husband gets upset because he says, you're making me fat. And, you know, we go on and on. But, um, I, you know, I think that, especially now, my kids are at an age where everyone is doing something different. And we, we were talking about this earlier. You know, we're lucky if we can get them where they need to be at, at a certain time of night or afternoon. There's probably one or two nights a week that we can all sit down and talk at dinner. And I love doing that, you know, because often that's where you find out what's going on in their lives and, and you see the interaction between siblings right. and you just know if right. something's off, right. you know, or if everything's okay. Yeah. Um, and we always do this thing, we, we do highs and lows. We go around and we say, what was your high for the day and what was your low for the day? And, and that's great too, because it's another insight. But I, you know, it doesn't matter if you're cooking. You could actually order in Chinese, I suppose, and yeah. still do that. But I think it's, it's getting together you know, and, and keeping a pulse on your family. I, I, mm -hmm. That, separately from what you were working at on in the book, I think is like the answer to everything, is if we, everybody just, their families eat dinner together yeah. as often as oh, possible, we'll yeah. all be okay. But, but, I mean, it, yeah. Eating dinner together really reflects more on being together. Right? Yeah, it is. Where I think right. um, Alex kind of thought, if I do this and check off and do this and check off, I've done it, when she was missing the point, you, you need to be with your daughter. Right. And you, you can't just do it here or here or he, you, you have to be available. Right. But she had and so, the daughter by default, though, so she never really wanted to be with her. Right, but, but she, once you own but that... But she also didn't want to give her up. No. Right, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so I think it, it's about... Um, I, I, I had a clip that I cut out of a magazine and had it on my bulletin board for a while, and it said, um, don't get caught up in the quality versus quantity time. You know, there was that... The truth is, the kids, your kids just want you to be there. To be yeah. around, they you know, presence. you know, yeah. yeah, and you know that actually, it, uh, in a way, I don't write myself into the books, thankfully, because everyone in my books lives a really miserable life. But, um, <laughs> you know, but every now and then, there's something that I struggle with that winds up in, in a character, and that's really where I am in Alex, because the double-edged sword of being successful is that you're not home a lot. And um, I, I mean, I sit there, I, my husband, I pinch myself all the time. We're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. You know, and, and every time you hear about people reading your books or someone stops you on the street, it's an amazing moment. But your family has to learn to share you. And I work really hard to not miss the big things. You know, but that is a, and any working mom would attest to that. You know, that's a big struggle. How do you balance who you are with who you need to be for your children. That's very, very hard. It's something people always say, oh, you make it look so easy. I'm glad it's a good illusion, but you know, it's never easy. It's never easy. I once, we had, um, we had a renovation being done at one of our schools. My oldest son was graduating from eighth grade and I was on tour in Africa. And I had planned this whole tour around being there for his graduation. And then I get a note from the principal saying, actually, we're moving graduation up by two yeah. weeks. <laughs> And I mean, I moved heaven and earth to get home in time from Africa. I wound up flying something like 40 hours straight in order to be there. And I was in a coma at this graduation, but I was there. <laughs> but you were there. You know, and that's what was really important. Yeah. And it, I think as long as you kind of keep your priorities straight, um, you know, and, and I guess being a parent means that your priority is never you. Right. It's not about mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a balanced thing. I mean, I don't think necessarily being a stay-at-home mom all the time is, is necessarily the answer either. Right. You know? yeah. Like for Alex, would she have been 
better mom. She a better mom miserable. if she had been home all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of hard to yeah. picture. Yeah. Right. You know, right. I, I mean, you need to feed your own right. self yeah. as mm-hmm. well. Well, Absolutely. Lacey was home all the time. I mean, she. I mean, pretty much she was, and she ran right. into problems right. too. Yeah. Well, she's. Yeah, I mean, she she's worked. delivering other people's kids. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But it, it. It is. It's always a balance. It always is. Mm-hmm. I. I mean, I think actually having kids. I remember that moment very well, and remembering. The moment I realized that I was a better mom when I was working a little bit. Exactly. You know, I, I could give everything I needed to to my kids when I was with them and then still have a couple hours to write a day. Yeah. And mm-hmm. once I figured that out, that was like, oh, oh, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. But I think you need to learn yourself how you can be your best parent. Some people should be stay at home parents and some people should not. And it's really a question of learning what you need to be. Right. You know? Going back to the food, just for one more question. <laughs> Do you want me to cook for you? We can, I can go in there. Maybe it's, I've got it on my mind. But I wanted to know if it was intentional that when Alex starts reconnecting with Jody in a much more genuine Josie, way. Josie, Josie, Josie don't sorry, Jody. Sorry, sorry. I, don't, I don't ever want to be the victim. It's no, 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 sorry, sorry. Um, but she starts trying to cook for her. Yes. And it becomes sort of a humorous way but they start connecting yeah. so I just had to follow Absolutely. that through that, oh, like, yeah, that yeah. Just, I thought that and that was, was very intentional, intentional. Okay. and yet she's still really bad at it she is <laughs> <And> the <laughs> lasagna on the barbecue right. I, I think, <laughs> I think we, yeah. I, that's how I show people I love them is by cooking for them mm. you know what I mean that and I don't know if that's what Alex was trying to do like that is a traditional way your grandmother would cook for you yeah. chicken soup when you're sick or whatever right. that that maybe she thought that's how I can show or you take the time to make something for someone you you know, you, you don't just open a can and dump it, but I'm going to show But it also goes back to what you said, time. because it's not about the quality, it's about the quantity. And Alex, in the cooking that she experiences as she reconnects with Josie, she knows she's really bad at it. She is failing, but guess what? Suddenly, it's okay to fail. Alex has never right. felt that. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And to understand mm-hmm. that it's okay if my grilled yeah. cheese turns out like a brick. You know, I'm still making it, and I'm spending right. time with her. I'm, I'm, by yeah. this, I'm showing you I care for you. I'm, exactly. I'm trying to do this thing out of my realm. And <laughs> right, 